Welcome to this video. And in this video, we will be looking at second order high pass filters. We look at second order high pass filters. For the second order high pass filters, we look at them in two categories as the passive second order high pass filter and the active second order high pass filters. For the passive form of the second order high pass filter, the simplest second order high pass filter constitutes of resistor, capacitor, inductor, network with all the components in series, but the output taken across the inductor as follows. So we have resistor, capacitor, and inductor in series, but the output taken across the inductor. This is the input and this is our output. So a resistor capacitor inductor series network with the output taken across the inductor. The output by voltage divider theorem will be given by the drop across the inductor given by SL over R plus one over SC plus SL multiplied by V in. We obtain our transfer function H of S, which is the ratio between the Laplace form of the input and output, which will be equal to, we can put the terms on the denominator and a common LCM of SC to obtain S squared LC on the numerator divided by S squared LC plus SRC plus one. We make the coefficient of S squared or the highest power of S in the denominator to be equal to one. We divide by LC and this is going to give us a transfer function of S squared over S squared plus S R over L plus one over LC. And this is the implementable transfer function of the second order high pass filter. The general transfer function of a second order filter is given by the general transfer function is given by H of S is equals to S squared over S squared plus S omega naught over Q plus omega naught squared where omega naught is the cutoff frequency and Q is the quality factor. If we compare the two transfer functions, if we compare the two transfer function, we notice that our transfer function H of S is S squared over S squared plus S R over L plus one over LC. We compare this with S squared over S squared plus S into omega naught over Q plus omega naught squared, where we are saying omega naught is the cutoff frequency, which will be given by omega naught squared is one over LC, and hence omega naught will be one over the square root of LC. And therefore the cutoff frequency for that filter will be given by one over square root over LC. Then from the coefficients of S in the denominator, you notice that R over L will be equal to omega naught over Q. And our quality factor Q will be equal to L over R omega naught, which can be written as L over R multiplied by one over the square root of LC, which again can be given as one over R, the square root of L over C. 
and the cutoff frequency of the filter will be obtained from that expression. And that is the implementation of the passive second order high pass filter. Next, we look at the implementation of the second order active filter. We look at the second order active high pass filter. There are a number of configurations we can use for the implementation of the second order active filter, but in this video, I'll only cover the unity gain silent key, the unit gain, silent key, active high pass filter. The active filter has two capacitors in the forward pad, a resistor in the feedback pad, and a resistor in the forward pad connected to the negative input terminal and the ground as follows. So we have a capacitor capacitor in the forward pad and a resistor grounded connected to the negative input terminal of the operational amplifier. This is the input capacitor C1, capacitor C2 and resistor R1. Then a resistor in the feedback pad Resistor R2 in the feedback pad, and then a feedback loop from the positive input terminal. That is the unity gain, silent key, high pass filter of second order. From this network, we notice that the positive input terminal is connected to the output and therefore the potential difference at the negative input terminal will also be V out since there exists a virtual ground between the positive and negative input terminals then at this point the output will be V out. We have two nodes we can consider we have this node we can call it node A and this node node B we can take the voltage or the potential difference at node a to be VA, and we analyze the catch off current laws at nodes A and B so as to obtain the implementable transfer function of our given filter network. We start with the catch off current law at node A. At node A, we have a current flowing in this direction, which constitutes of V in minus VA over one over SC1, which ideally we can write as, we can write as V in minus VA into SC1, plus a current that flows in the feedback path, which will be V out minus VA over R2, will be equal to the current that leaves the node at this point will be VA minus V out, VA minus V out divided by one over SC2, which you multiply with SC2. We can collect the like terms and notice that VA into, so we will take all the terms for VA into the right hand side of our equation. We can write VA into SC2 plus SC1 plus one over R2. There is this term, this term, and VA over R2 will be equal to, then on the right hand side, we'll have the term V in on the left hand side, that is V in multiplied by SC1 and write this as SC1 V in plus V out into 
SC2 plus one over R2. We can put all the terms under common LCM of R2 and observe that our VA into SC2 R2 plus SC1 R1 plus one will be equal to SC1 R2 V in plus V out into SC2. I can put this as plus can fit into V out into SC2 R2 plus one. And we can call this equation one. At node B, at node B, we would obtain the Kirchhoff's current law at node B as follows. V A minus V out into S C two, the current that gets to the node, which is V A minus V out divided by one over S C two, will be equal to the current that leaves the node, which is the current in this direction, as V out divided by R one. We can make again V A the subject of the formula by writing our VA into SC2 to be equal to V out into SC2 plus one over R1 from which our VA will be equal to, our VA will be equal to V out into SC2 R1 plus one over SC2 R1, we can call this equation two. Equations one and two are the equations of VA and therefore we can equate the two. Since equation V, that is equation one and two are the equations of VA, we can equate the two to obtain V out into SC2 R1 plus one divided by SC2 R1 into SC2 R2 plus SC1 R2 plus one will be equal to SC1 R2 V in plus V out into SC2 R2 plus one. We can multiply both sides by SC2 R1 to obtain V out into, then we multiply out the terms on the left-hand side of our equation to obtain S squared C2 squared R1 R2 plus, then we'll have S C2 R2 plus S squared C1 C2 R1 R2 plus S C1 R2 plus plus S C2 R1 plus one will be equal to, then we multiply these terms with SC2 R1 to obtain V in into SC1 S squared C1 C2 R1 R2 plus V out into SC2 S squared So this will be S squared, C2 squared, R1, R2 plus SC2, R1. If we collect the like terms together, we'll obtain V out into, so this term and this term will cancel out and then SC2, R1 and SC2, R1 will cancel out to obtain this as S squared 
C1, C2, R1, R2, start with the highest power of S plus S R2 into C1 plus C2, this term and this term, S R2 is common and then C2 and C1 into brackets plus one, will be equal to, and then on the right, we'll have V in into S squared C1, C2, R1, R2. We obtain the transfer function V out over V in, which is the implementable transfer function to be equal to, we'll have S squared C1, C2, R1, R2, divided by S squared C1, C2, R1, R2, plus S R2 into C1 plus C2 plus one. Again, we would wish to make the coefficient of the highest power of S in the denominator polynomial of the transfer function as one, and therefore we divide by C1, C2, R1, R2 on both the numerator and denominator and we obtain the implementable transfer function h of s to be equal to s squared over s squared plus, then these terms will be s into c1 plus c2 divided by r1 c1 c2, Sorry, this is R1, C1, C2, and then plus one over C1, C2, R1, R2. We notice that this is similar to the implementable transfer function or the general transfer function of a second order high pass filter given by S squared over S squared plus S omega naught over Q plus omega naught squared. We can choose the component values as follows. If C1 is equals to C2, which is C, and R1 is equals to R2, which is R, our implementable transfer function becomes S squared over S squared plus, this becomes 2C over 2C squared, which will give us 2 over R S, plus one over RC squared. And if we compare this transfer function with that of a general order, second order hyper filter, we we'll notice that our cutoff frequency will be equal to one over RC. We compare this term, which is the constant on the denominator polynomial of the transfer function, our omega naught will be one over RC. And also we compare omega naught over Q to be equal to two over R, to two over R. Sorry, this should have been two over RC. So this is two C over RC squared. So this is two RC from which our quality factor Q will be equal to RC and then multiplied by omega naught over two, which will be equal to RC multiplied by one over RC divided by two and our quality factor Q will be equal to a half. And that is the implementation of a second order active high pass filter using the unity gain silent key network. Otherwise, there are other networks which can be used for implementation of the active second order high pass filter. But for purposes of this video, I only look at the unity gain silent key network. That is the end of my presentation and thank you for watching this video.